Hello traders, welcome to this next part of my free course about supply and demand trading, trading like financial institutions. In my first part I showed you how we find and can find these supply and demand zones manually by checking the chart, by drawing the boxes. If you missed this part, I strongly advise you that you watch this video first because I don't want to go that deep in, in all the stuff again in this video. This part today is about a multi time frame supply and demand indicator with trade alerts. I show you today how the indicator can find these supply and demand zones. In this part, I show you um, the single time frame mode first and in the next part, in the next videos, I show you the advanced um, methods um, from this multi time frame supply and demand indicator. It's the Metagrid multi time frame supply and demand indicator. Let's dive into it. Okay, we are on a M15 chart at the moment on the Kiwi dollar and this is how it looks if you have attached the multi time frame supply indicator to it. You can see the indicator already trod to, in this case, supply zones. Remember, like we um, can find such zones, we want to see a balance first and then imbalance. And you can see in this example, the indicator recognized that we had here a time of balance where price is going up and down and we have some tiny little candles um, with wicks on it, so pin bars. Um, so the price was here in balance and then suddenly we had in balance or out of balance. And this is the reason why the indicator automatically trod here this supply zone. And if we want to trade this, we would wait that um, price comes back to this supply zone, to this M15 supply zone. And then it depends how you trade supply and demand. I showed you already two methods in my first part. Um, and we come to this trading methods with the scanner in the next parts of this free course. So stick with me and today we want only to focus on how the scanner draws these boxes. And this is the single time frame mode of the scanner. If we check here the settings of the scanner, you can see it's the single time frame mode. And you can change the modes. There's a manual mode, an automatic and the single time frame mode. The other two modes I show you in the next part of this free course, but that you can see how the scanner works, what it does and what a single time frame mode can do for you. This is about all about this in this video and we go deeper in the advanced modes than in the next parts of this free course. Okay, let's go back to our chart, our M15 chart of the Kiwi dollar. So this is a really obvious supply zone, like we learned that in the first part of my supply and demand trading course. And um, it's very easy if you attach the scanner, then you have already this zone on it. You have not to check the complete chart. But you can see here is another supply zone and you maybe ask yourself uh, there is no uh, real balance before we have here in balance or out of balance for sure but there is no not a classic balance zone like i told you in my first part the reason for this is that this um, supply and demand indicator does not only check for this balance and imbalance zones the multi time frame indicator here does also check for additional supply and demand zones, especially based on order volume. For this we use external data and with this external data we can calculate additional supply and demand zones. And the indicator calculated in this case that behind this move were a lot of order volume so that this here is also a zone where maybe when price comes back, we see a reaction. So um, it's also a zone where um, maybe an institutional trader pushed a lot of order volume into the market. Um, you can see it here. And like maybe the candles before. And that 
the other in institutional traders or the minor traders and the retail traders want to have the same price like I explained you in my first part and when the uh, price comes back here then we maybe can trade again a push downward. So the multi time frame supply and demand indicator finds this classic uh, supply and demand zones like here with the balance and out of balance but it can also find additional supply and demand zones based on order volume and external data we use to calculate here these zones. If we go back to the settings of the scanner you can find the colors here. You can change them if you want and you see here for M1 for example it's a dim gray so if you are on the M1 chart all the boxes would be painted in dim gray and for M5 for example in pink and here lime green and so on and so on and you can change them like I told you but the first thing you should do if you own this scanner you should get used to these colors that you can recognize them on the chart. Okay this happens really fast normally after some days you already know I see a green box green stands for a M15 supply and demand zone. Why is this so important to know um, from which time frame such a box comes? Um, if you remember back to my free course um, the higher the time frame the more stable these supply and demand zones are. So a M15 supply or demand zone is a little more uh, less stable than for example a supply or demand zone from a higher time frame. So if you see such a M15 um, supply zone and the price would come back here into our zone and we decide to open here a sell trade um, then you should not aim for 100 or 200 pips because you know it's a M15 supply zone and normally M15 supply or the demand zones are good for maybe 15, 20, maybe 30 pips but not for 100 and so this helps you define your target. The stop loss is it's a little bit easier because normally we place the stop loss above a supply zone or below a demand zone or in this case you could also place the stop loss for example here on this high um, of this balance zone before. So check we, we check the time frames a little bit if we go to M1 you can see there is at the moment no supply and demand zone found. The M1 is very noisy and you don't uh, see every time here a zone. We go to M5. Uh, let's see if uh, there are high, there's a higher one you can see. Um, there was found a supply zone, a small one from M5. If we scroll back, let's see where this zone began. I make, I zoom a little bit out. You can see it's a really, really small zone here found on M5. M5 is also a little bit noisy. And if we scroll further back, you can see um, here was also found uh, M5 supply zone. If you want to trade with them, you saw it in my free course part one that even M5 zones for scalping can give pips. Okay, we zoom out again and we check now um, M15 you already saw and you can see um, if we zoom a little bit out there are more M15 zones on it. This is a demand zone. It's below the actual price and um, if you maybe ask yourself it's a supply is it a supply or is it a demand zone it's really very very easy if you have a box where the candle pushes downwards at the beginning it's of course a supply zone remember back to my uh, first part where we learned the supply and demand trading if we have the beginning of such a box and we have a big candle going down it only can be a supply zone and if we um, see a box like this. Let's find the beginning of this um, demand zone. We have to make the chart a little bit smaller here and if we find like here, let's see where it starts here and if we see a box at the beginning of the box the candles push above then it's a demand zone. In this case I had uh, really to, uh, to zoom out a lot so this candle looks a little bit small but uh, it was a big scandal so it's only because of the zooming at the moment and this is very easy um, to understand. If we have an up move at the beginning of such a box it's a demand zone and if the price push downwards um, like here 
then it's of course a supply zone. So um, this is the first thing you have to understand and learn. It's normally very easy. Maybe you watch again the first part of my video and then you will see it's obvious what I explain to you. If we go to M30, you can see we have here this kind of boxes from the color. You can see it found here uh, supply zone. This is a classic balance invalence zone. We had here balance with VIX on it and the price stayed for some hours um, on the same range and then suddenly we uh, got here this um, two strong down moves and this is the reason why the scanner here painted this supply box on it. And you can see here above a really nice supply zone um, was found here the price came back into this zone and reacted really strong here on the M13. And you can see here we have also um, a bigger M30 zone and this is the zone which the scanner found here on December the 3rd um, um, at the end of December. And if we go back you will see and we zoom out a little bit again you can see that this supply zone is in this big M30 supply zone. There was also found a, a bigger one. So this is a double zone in this case. And you can see how often this zone gave a profit. The price came back here and it reacted. It came back here and reacted and it reacted and reacted and reacted and so on and so on. So the price never managed it so far to destroy this big supply zone and then we have again here a smaller M30 zone. Remember um, the zones we see here is based on the time frame we are because we are on the single time frame mode here. So let's zoom out again. Let's check the H1 and you can see this is really nice here. This is a volume based supply zone because we have no balance before but this strong down push here with a lot of order volume behind created here this supply zone and we would wait that price comes back here in our into our box and then we have different options how we want to trade this. And remember again I will show you during this uh, course again some uh, methods how you can use the scanner um, for entries. We go uh, to the next uh, higher time frame it's the H4. You can see again we have here nice demand zones. This is a demand zone and let's see. Um, I would say this is a kind of balance and volume based demand zone. We have a little bit balance here with uh, wicks on these candles and then there came this um, up move in the scanner. Um, scans every candle here and the movement of the candle of the behavior of the candle and if the behavior the volume and all put together gives a demand zone um, then it will paint it here. Normally um, this box you see here the uh, scanner should have found after the close of this candle. So uh, after the close of this green candle the scanner most probably had drawn already this box. It does normally take one or two candles. So if you see such a box the scanner painted this on your chart either after the close of this or this candle. It does not take longer than two candles. One or two candles. So if you see such a box like here and you want to know um, yeah, when was this box drawn then it has been drawn either after the close of this red candle or this green one. It does not take longer than two candles um, to recognize such a zone. But the scanner has of course to wait for the volume and the close of these candles. If you remember back how we found manually these uh, supply and demand zones, we had to wait also um, to see such a push for example. We could not draw such a zone only because there is a little bit um, spiky and wicks on the candle. We need a push of course too and it's the same for the scanner. And you can see this um, demand zone here was really nice. The price came back here. So f it was found uh, by end of November last year and then the price came back now in um, end of December first time and reacted 
and some days ago it came again back to this zone and reacted a second time. I personally like the first reaction. Um, the second and third reaction is mostly a little bit weaker and there will come the day maybe where this zone gets broken. So the more often the price comes back to a, such a zone, the weaker it gets. So if you want to go with the strongest possible move, you should only trade the first retest of this zone. You see it gave you the best reaction and if it comes back again and you can see already this here is a lower high as this high. This is the first warning sign that the price wants to push deeper and that maybe this demand zone does not hold uh, another retest. And you can see the price is at the moment here. We don't know if this demand zone holds now, if it goes back again here upwards or not. But it was a really nice zone. And we had here a supply zone too. Uh, you can see it here with this strong down move here. So after this or this candle, this box has been created and drawn to your chart. And you can see price came back and dipped a little bit deeper into this zone. And then uh, it gave here this down move. So a really nice zones here on this scanner. And if you want to do this all by yourself and calculate all the zones by yourself, or all these time frames, you take hours for this. And the scanner does this in one second if you go to such a time frame. We go to the D1. You can see on the daily time frame at the moment, we can't see here any uh, box. So there is no demand or supply zone found so far. We check the weekly. And you can see on the weekly chart, um, which I don't um, trade personally, and it's a really heavy time frame because you get large stop losses. If you see this box here, and you would have been traded this, uh, this box is um, 700 pips big. Um, you would not trade such a box. If you see a small weekly box, maybe with 100 pips or so, then you can go with it, but no one would trade a box like here with 700 pips distance between um, the upper and the lower end of this box. Uh, it's it's crazy to trade something. Um, nevertheless, you can see the box reacted. Um, it was found in 2020, in March 2020, and a price came back in September last year. Um, it was really going down deep into this demand zone, but it reacted and yeah, it reacted for uh, 350 pips, but still we don't trade normally such a big zone. And the monthly, uh, you can see we have here also very good trades, but if we see here, it has a box of 400 pips and this is a zone of 380 pips. In my opinion, it's too large. But if you want to trade such boxes, you can do this. You can see the scanner found here this monthly supply zone. And in this case, this um, the, um, supply zone has been created in 2015. In January 2015, um, this supply has been generated and um, price came first time back here in 2016 and it retested it on 2017 and in January 2021. And all these retests gave profit. The last retest, if we had here opened a sell trade, gave a max of almost 2000 pips in this case. We are on the monthly chart and so we have large, large targets we can aim for, but I don't use the weekly and the monthly chart, but some traders want to maybe, and I want to show you um, how it looks like. And of course, the scanner can give you different alerts. Um, I want to show you this alerts uh, in the next parts of the series in this free course. So it comes some parts later. Because the first thing you have to understand how the scanner works and you should not begin with the alerts at the first time. 
you should firstly um, understand how to use the scanner, what the scanner shows you in the different modes, and then you can go with the trading alerts which the scanner can give you. But only that you have seen it already, in the settings you can see we have here these different alerts, approach, in zone, fresh zones, and a strong signal. What this means, it comes in one of the next parts of this free course, so stay with me. I don't want to make this video too long for this single time frame mode. Um, I want to show you some more pairs and how they look uh, like on the scanner. Um, let's go for example here on the pound dollar. Let's see, it's the monthly um, chart. Um, I think we go to a lower time frame which we normally use for this scanner. Let's go to the H1 for example and you can see a lot of reactions and today there has been created a fresh supply zone here. You can see um, this big down move here, this massive down move here. It's totally out of balance at the moment on the H1 and it gives maybe a good chance when price comes back here and you can see that here a supply zone created here um, and the price came then back again here in this zone and gave here this reaction and if we go further back in the chart you can also see that we had here a supply zone and here a supply zone and the price came back in this supply zone reacted it came back it came back here it was a little bit um, close to maybe our stop loss if we had placed it here above um, our uh, here above our supply zone but there was some pips room left and you can already see if we have uh, days where a lot of such strong down moves appear then it can happen that you see uh, more of these boxes on the same place or so um, but this is good because if you see that you have here I zoom a little bit out here if you have here this white H1 box, this one here, and a little bit deeper again, a, a fresh supply zone. So two supply zones almost on the same place. This is even stronger. Okay, this tells you even more. Okay, this could or should work. Let's go to a lower time frame, the M30. You can see we are at the moment approaching here, maybe this demand zone here. And if you want to see the beginning of the zone, it uh, was a while ago. Let's see where it started this box. It's sometimes not easy to find. We have to zoom a lot of out if it's a, a old zone. You can see this is a really old zone here. We have to go far back in the history of this uh, pair here. And uh, again, I zoomed a lot of out. And so these candles are looking now tiny. But if we could zoom um, in again without destroying here the chart picture, we would see that these are large candles here. So um, this demand on, M on M30 was created end of November last year. And um, the um, candles are now approaching maybe again this zone. And then we have to see if we can get a trade out of this here. And here above we have some supply zones and you can see here it came back to the zone reacted and gave a really nice um, down move here. We check the M15. We have some M15 supply zones. It depends from day to day um, on some days where we have a lot of such down moves with bigger candles. We see more boxes and there are times where the price moves maybe in a range and then you will see less of these boxes. And if you want to check the M5, you can see we have here also some little small M5 boxes. And of course on the M5, and we have here only uh, 10 pips, for example, or here uh, we have um, 20 pips, almost 20 pips box. So if you want to go for scalping with these boxes, but like I told you on my first part, you will see more losers um, on the lower time frame, especially on M5. and M1 is a little bit crazy to trade supply and demand. Um, still, there are some zones on it, like you can see here. And yeah, sometimes you get really nice trades with it. 
Um, it's crazy because the stop loss is so small. If you see the box is um, two pips, has a has a, a distance of two pips from the um, upside to the downside, but still it does work here. You can see this box has been created after the close of this or this candle. Like I told you, it takes normally two candles um, and then this box gets created. So it took in this case, we're on the M1 time frame, two candles maybe. So two minutes after the close of this candle, you can see this box here and then um, some minutes later it came back to this tiny tiny two pips box and reacted for let's see um, 17 pips so uh, this is a giant uh, win ratio if you have a stop loss of two pips and you can get a move of 17 pips and if you had stayed longer you could even get more out of it and it came back a second time and on the second time it reacted even more and gave here 20 and pips and max almost 40 pips with a two pips stop loss if you have placed it here below so this is a 1 to 20 ratio uh, from two pips to 40 pips and this is sometimes crazy but be warned of course many of these m1 zones do not hold but you lose in this case only two pips, okay? So if you want to focus for on scalping and scalping this demand and supply zones, you lose here two, maybe if you make a larger stop loss, three or four or five pips, and you have the chance for 17, 20 or 40 pips, but you have to face more losers. Maybe you lose seven times in a row with a two pip stop loss, then you lost um, 14 pips, but then you get maybe a move with 40 pips. Um, so you have to see, you will make the, the um, win rate gets lower on these low time frames, um, but you have really small stop losses. So you don't lose so much money, um, that much money if it goes the other way. Okay, we check one more pair and I show you uh, one or two methods how we can trade this single time frame boxes. What is a possible entry and you can see we here on the m1 again on the dollar yen in this case and some minutes ago we got here this nice reaction if we zoom out a little bit we will see where this box started so um, this box has been created around five hours ago on this m1 chart you can see this up move here um, even after this close of this or this candle, this box has been drawn to your chart. And now some minutes ago, it came here all the way back to our um, demand zone. And let's check how big this zone is. Um, almost five pips. And the move so far is 25 pips. So it's a one to five ratio with this M1 box here. Um, let's go to high, higher time frame. We use the H1, and you can see we have here a wonderful supply zone. This is really out of balance here. You can see this big red candle. We have we are totally out of balance here in this case. And what we want to do is we want to wait that price comes back to this zone, for example, and we want to trade this. How can we trade um, this zone? The wonderful thing about uh, supply and demand trading is that you have a lot of time to plan your trades. Okay, you can see this zone has been found by end of December, so some weeks ago. And since today, it came not back to this zone. So you have all the time to plan such a trade. You don't uh, need to be in rush. You can check the chart. You can check the higher time frames, and then you decide, yeah, this is such a out of balance uh, zone here that I want to trade this. The easiest method is of course that you simply put a pending order here um, below this box. Maybe with a trade manager like Metagrid, then it's very easy, or you use the internal functions of the MetaTrader trading platform. So we would maybe um, want to place here our cell entry a little bit below this white box. So we may make a right 
click with the mouse and we say cell limit. In this case with one mini lot if you want to have a different lot size. Um, if you click here on this little arrow you can change here the lot sizes of your trades. And of course we need uh, to adjust it a little bit. So let's say we want to place this order right below here this supply zone and of course we need um, a stop loss and a target. So we double click here on it and then we can modify it. Let's copy here first this um, um, entry price and we paste it here in and let's define a stop loss. Let's say around here 137.775. We adjust it then of course only that we have a number for it and we paste in again the same number and we need a target. So let's say around 135.175 only that we have two numbers in it. We click on modify and now we get here these lines that we can adjust uh, the target and the stop loss. Of course the stop loss we could place if we move it with the mouse here then right above the box. But you can see there's a little bit of wick of this candle so I would cover this with the stop loss so we go a little bit higher maybe. So this is a good stop loss for the supply zone and let's check how big this stop loss is. It's 60 pips in this case. It's a bigger one. Um, you have to ask yourself if you want to go with a 60 pip stop loss maybe you reduce your lot size um, and that you can manage your risk and um, maybe you go with a 1 to 2 a target and we would go for 120 pips in this case. Let's see how far price has to come. So 120 pips is around here. Um, it's also good that you check the structure of your pair on the uh, time frame you want to trade to find a good place for a target. You can see for example at the moment we have here a high and maybe if price comes back here uh, our entry and pending order gets filled and then price could bounce again here. If it goes down all the way down maybe it bounces here so you could move your target maybe to this position. Um, if you look further back in the left side there's also here a kind of support. So it can happen that price comes back, our order gets filled and then it begins to bounce here on this support. So you could also use a smaller target that you go um, for this one here. And you can see in this case it would give us a little bit more than 81 euros in profit and we would lose here around 40 pips. It's also good we lose 40 pips and if we win 80 pips um, we doubled here our risk. Um, so um, this is good. I would go for this setting in this case for example. But the thing with this um, method is of course if the fundamental news changes like I told you in my um, first part of the video um, and the fundamental news changed that way that maybe the dollar is so strong that this zone does not hold anymore if the when the price comes back then we get filled because the pending order is there and then maybe the price destroys here the supply zone and then we are in this trade regardless what happens. This is a method here if you have not so much time if you want to plan your trades um, dates or even weeks before it's good uh, to do this. But you will have a little bit higher losing rate because of course um, if the fundamental news changes and nobody wants to sell anymore this pair to such a good price. It's a really good price to sell it. Of course when it comes back here it's a really good discount we get here. Um, we get a high price, um, not a discount but we get a high price and if it drops again from there to there or there we get a really nice profit. But if something happened when price comes back here and nobody wants to sell this pair anymore then of course the chance for a loser is bigger. So um, you have to deal with a, with a higher losing rate but still it works. Okay because if you go for bigger targets like your stop loss you will win more than you lose with the winner. So in this case if we win this trade with 80 euros 
um, and we go for the next trade also with maybe a, a stop loss of 40 pips, we can, with the profit of this trade, lose the next two trades and so on. And maybe you find some setting where you really can go uh, to this and then you have a profit, let's see, from 160 euros. So you can then, in this case, lose um, the next four trades. If you win this trade, you can lose the next four trades. And this is one of the magic things um, from supply and demand trading. <clears throat> but there's, of course, a different method you can use. If it's, this is too risky for you, I can understand it. This is for people who want to plan the trade, plan and forget, set and forget. Um, maybe you do this um, every 24 hours before you go to sleep or at the morning after uh, you are fresh and you have maybe 30 minutes time, then you switch to your time frames and you look for such obvious zones, really obvious zones where you look on the chart and you see in seconds, this is a magic zone here with this Im impressive candle and so on. And then you plan your trade, set and forget, and maybe some days, some weeks later, it fi the order gets filled and you win or lose this trade. And what is the alternative to this entry method? I want to show you the, uh, the alternative approach um, with this example here, okay? Let's zoom in. We had here this demand zone, it was basically a volume-based demand zone. You can see there was no really balance before. So the indicator found this demand zone based on the order volume and the external data we used to calculate this um, zones. And you can see price came back one time, two time, and then it was going really up high. So the alternative approach to um, trade such a zone is that you only place an alert um, on this zone, so above this zone. And we can do this with MT4. We make also a click with the right mouse button and then you get here trading and then alert. You click on it and you can see this um, line here with this little red arrow and you can move this line here around. And if you want to place this alert exactly here above this demand zone, you could maybe um, with here with the horizontal um, line tool, here a horizontal line. Let's say we want to have this alert around here and then you can move this alert line here exactly above this white line. After that you can delete the white line and then you have placed this alert exactly here on this place. Um, later this year I will publish a software for MT4 alerts, which can give you alerts much easier than this method because it, I, I don't like really this MT4 alerts. Um, I want to have alerts easier. If I create a box, a trend line or horizontal line, I want to get alerts with these lines. And later this year, I will publish a software which will make these alerts so much easier, you will like and love it. I'm very sure about this. Um, the software will come out during 2023. Wait for it um, and check my Telegram groups and the YouTube channels. If when this alert software comes out, you will really like it because I have already the alpha version running on my um, MT4 and it makes life so much easier to find uh, or to get trade alerts. But back to this example. So we have placed here our trade alert. If we make a right mouse click on it, we can modify it. And then you can maybe decide to get not only a sound, but also a mail a notification or a notification to your mobile phone, for example. Um, so we wait, we, we created this alert, of course, after we saw this box, say, we are here on the beginning of January this year. You can see this box has been created on January the 3rd. Um, after this or this candle, this box was created. We saw it in our chart. And let's say we, we checked uh, the chart here after this red candle. We opened at the morning our chart. We saw here already this white box. And then we placed here this alert. And then the price came back on the same day, some hours later in this case, 
And then when the candle is here, the price is here, MT4 gives you this alert, maybe by email, mobile phone, whatever. You get this alert and what you do then next is to observe what price is doing on this box. Does this box hold? And for this you can switch to a lower time frame beyond the M uh, H1. And let's mark here this candle. This was the candle which approached here our zone and where we get this alert. And we switch now to M15 and we check where this white line is. It's here. We don't see now the um, white box anymore because we have the single um, time frame mode and on the single time frame mode we don't see the H1 boxes. So um, I don't want to show you now the multi time frame mode. Uh, for this reason we go back to H1 and we mark here this zone. It goes much easier with the multi time frame mode of the scanner but I don't want to confuse you. Um, I want to only show you an entry method. Okay, In the next part of the video you will see that we can see this white box even on the M15 chart if you use the multi time frame mode of the scanner. Okay, so let's go back to M15. We scroll back. So this is our demand zone. This is the was uh, the moment when price approaches here our zone. We get here the alert from MT4, and now we observe what price is doing. You can see we get a, a immediately a reaction here on this zone. We get a wick here on this candle. It spikes here, and then we get a really strong green candle. This is a good sign that a, a demand zone should hold and give you pips. So you would enter the trade after this green candle or if you already see we have here this pin bar and it begins to push upwards, 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 then you could maybe open here your buy trade. Of course you have a later entry. If we had placed a pending order right above this box here, we get filled and it's a sniper entry then because a little bit drawdown and then it goes up. But this does not happen always of course. Um, so with the with the alert method and the confirmation method, I would call it the confirmation method, you wait for confirmation that this box holds. You have a little bit of later entry but still you have a higher win rate. Because if this box does not hold and let's say after this candle it goes down and down and down, you would not trade this box, you would wait. And you can see the same as um, one day later we have a second retest of our box, of our white box here. Let's mark this. We have here the second retest. It's the same if you had still the alert on it. You would wait and you would see, yeah, it begins to get green, a little bit retracement, it gets greener and greener. Yeah, I jump in this trade. And then you are here in a really nice buy trade. This is the alternative approach um, which I use the most. And let's say this to you. There's a built-in alert which gives you exactly an alert if we have such a situation. So you don't have to wait all day long that's, um, that you check candle by candle. Um, the scanner has an alert built-in which gives you an alert when the zone holds or it looks like it could hold, better to say, okay? So the scanner would give you, had given you an alert around this candle here, for example, okay? So I show you these alerts later in the next parts of the videos, um, but I want only to tell you that there is an alert possible to get notified um, if you have such a strong buy signal like here or here. Okay, we are back on the H1. We can here remove our line here and the alert. You will see if you use the multi time frame mode in the next uh, video, in the next part of this course, um, that it is much easier to, f uh, to see these boxes if you switch the time frame, because then we get even on the M15 time frame also the H1 boxes and so on. And then it's uh, very easy um, to check um, these entries on the lower time frames too. So if you wanted maybe to trade here this box, because we have also a really um, nice green candle here. It looks like a nice zone because 
on the left side we have also kind of resistance maybe you can see the price um, bounce a lot here on this area so we have a demand zone here and a kind of resistance here so this zone could also be very interesting for trading and if you want to use this alternatively uh, approach you would um, place here an alert like i showed you you wait that price comes back gives you this alert and then you check on a lower time frame if this box holds or maybe you use the built-in alert for strong signals and if the scanner sees this as a strong signal it would give you then the alert too if this box holds but the alerts i will show you later in one of the next videos okay guys this was the part of the single time frame mode today in the next part of this course i show you the other two modes of the scanner and these modes are really powerful uh, you will see that i hope you check the next video in the next part of this course and if you already have this scanner um, my advice is that you really begin with this single time frame mode that you get used to the scanner that you get used to the colors and the behavior of the scanner that you try it on the demo account and if you then feel confident with the single time frame mode then you step to the multi time frame mode for example but this comes in the next part in the next video see you then goodbye